everybody. <laughs> that was my Broadway stance. Whatever. Happy, happy hump day. Happy Ash Wednesday, if you observe. Welcome back to another Ask Serena. I am Janine Truitt, if you don't already know. Your host. The hostess with the mostess. And this is a supplement to what you just read. Um, or if you haven't read, then you're going to head back to the aristocracy of HR.com and check out the blog post, Engaging Your Company Alumni Beyond Resignation. That's the blog post of this week. And I am excited about this topic, um, largely because I don't think that we think very much about what we do with employees when they resign. So there's a lot of talk about exit interviews and managing that process and even getting ahead of exit interviews, doing things like stay interviews to make sure that people are happy with our organizations. But let's just say we miss all of that. Let's just say we in a perfect world did all of that. We did the stay interview. They still let us know that they wanted to go. We're just not the right fit for them in their life at this particular point. What do we do beyond the resignation? And I think that varies. So I think in some cases, in, in very rare cases, you have employees that will keep in touch with their immediate manager so long as there was a good relationship and that wasn't uh, the impetus for them to leave the position. But they keep in touch for a time, and then you know you kind of wane and wade in that kind of thing. But as far as from the company perspective, how do you keep those lines of dialogue open with somebody that's left the organization? So I'm not talking about somebody who is a bad employee. We obviously, somebody that is a bad employee or not the right fit, we chuck up the deuces when we get that resignation letter and we pray and say thanks that they have given whatever little effort they had to give. We wish them well and we let them go upon their way. No need to engage them any further. But the good employee, the ones that you don't want to lose, what do we really have in place to keep the lines of dialogue open? And is there a value in keeping the lines of dialogue open with these people? I believe there is. And I think one of the ways that we can do that is by creating these talent communities or these at least some semblance of a community in order to kind of keep them at arm's length. But we've got to have some things in place before we even get there. So in the blog post, I go into why it can be beneficial to have something like a corporate alumni network, which, by the way, many companies have. Deloitte, IBM, KPMG, just to name a few, have these kinds of things. And so you can read more about that in the blog post. But what I'm here to address is the systems aspect, the process, the procedural aspect of how we get to the point of having a network. So it's been my experience in HR that uh, the systems very rarely aid this kind of thing in a way that would be seamless. So there's a lot of different reasons why you would want to rehire somebody that worked for you who was equally good but decided to move on. Obviously, because they can assimilate very easily into your organization, uh, they know the way, they are a known entity. And so you know them, they know you, and unless they've picked up some bad habits elsewhere, it's a very familiar situation. And so it lends itself very well. Except, again, on the systems end, how are you coding these people? How do you code anybody that terminates? And it's been my experience that companies often are in their feelings. What do I mean by in their feelings? They take it as a personal affront when somebody has asked to resign or decides to resign from the organization. And so when you're looking at it through that lens, 
it's going to be very hard for you to leave them one with a good taste in their mouth and two for you to even leave lines of communication open with that person when you're looking at it as a personal affront to the business so i think the first step is to step back from any feelings of feeling affronted unless they're just on an all-out attack against you i think you need to be in a place of wanting to learn from that person who was coined or tendered, I should say, a resignation. So you want to learn. You want to know what is it? What is the reason why they want to leave you? Because getting that information and understanding those things are what may allow you to retain that sort of employee better in the future. So you don't want to kind of piss people off or start treating them poorly in their last days with your company so that then they shut down or if they do open up they open up and say a lot of things that maybe aren't as helpful it's just said out of anger because their anger is matching your anger right you feel affronted so i say this to say stop feeling affronted companies it's not about you it's about them they are tendering their services to you on a daily basis and everybody has the opportunity and the right to choose what is right for them what is right for their families and people move on i think this is one of the things that if i could have recorded myself when i was in hr i would have recorded myself quite frequently so that my hiring managers can hear this over and over again people can leave people will leave people should leave because you know what maybe you don't have the career upward mobility or the opportunities that they need to progress their career in which case you should support that so that's the first step the next step is once you can get past that you need to look at your systems how are they being coded they need to people that are leaving your organization for any reason whether it's a termination for cause or voluntary termination or a reduction in force whatever it is they should be coded appropriately and to that end when we're talking about these boomerang employees or people that could return to your uh, employee let's just say you want to be sure that they're coded in such a way that if you're not there tomorrow the next person understands that this is somebody that should be rehired with no issue. So for me in HR, it was never always clear to me who was rehirable and who wasn't. Some organizations were better than others, but I had one organization, for instance, that had me calling all over the Dangon company to find managers who might have managed this person and in some cases, it was like a decade or more ago, like, how are they going to remember that? How many people have they managed since then? It's just not an effective way of managing rehires or people that could be rehirable. So my pointer in that is be mindful of how you're tracking these people. Be sure that in your system, you have proper codes, that they are consistent, that the people that are responsible for um, tendering terminations or putting in whatever the background paperwork on that are well trained to know how to take care of that and so part of the rehire piece and how you would code them kind of goes back to how good of an employee were they did they perform up to snuff were they a meet standards person were they you know above standards person whatever if they were meets or exceeding expectations one would think so long as there were no other issues that they would be rehirable in which case they should be flagged as being rehirable so that anybody that touches their file or touches them from an electronic standpoint knows that if this person applies to my job no problem they're rehirable no recruiter should have to call around the world to try to figure out whether somebody's rehirable so that's one thing. The other thing is once you get past all of that and your systems are in place, your coding is on point, the other consideration is how seamlessly are you how seamless are you going to make the process? So, you know, if it's between a certain zero to five years, does a person just get grandfathered back in for benefits for 
pension, for 401ks, et cetera, those are some nice incentives. I've found that it's made people's life a lot easier and it's made them really happy to rejoin a company when they know that they can go back to accruing from the place where they were at. So if they have to come and rejoin your company and start from the ground up again, in terms of accruing vacation, in terms of benefits and pension and retirement and all of that, it's a little bit of a turnoff because they've just come from a situation where quite frankly, they may have started accruing those things over the years in another organization. And so it's like starting all over again when they should really be able to pick up where they left off from. So I'm not telling you how to run that. Every company has their own mantras around this and you may have some specific business reasons why you wouldn't do that kind of thing. But I'm just saying that these are some things that may make somebody feel better about rejoining the company. Incentivize. And so that you have the consistency of how you code them, the consistency of how they get handled from a procedure standpoint. And then we get into the whole thing of how you kind of reassimilate them back into your organization. That makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, the third piece is just the network. So now we can start to talk about the network. Now we can start to talk about a corporate uh, alumni network of sorts. And so some people are going to probably say, well, Janine, I need this, like I need another compliance form. I don't have time to be manage managing another talent community, except what if I told you that this talent community may be something that you could tap into if they're not going to come back to you, maybe indirectly, they can be funneling the right people to you, passive candidates, active candidates and because they know the way that you work because they know how your organization functions and because you've kept this great rapport with them going what if they say you know what this has been an all-around great experience i have absolutely no problem at this time referring people your way it's a win-win is it not you get to keep in touch with a great person who once worked for you and in return, they open up their network to you. And, you know, obviously with the Deloitte's and the KPMG's and Microsoft's of the world, they have some pretty extensive networks. But I think it can be a very simple thing where you allow them to speak to you. You allow the push of some information about your company and things and strides that you're making. And it also allows you, <clears throat> excuse me, to open up dialogue between ex-employees, um, you know, who may have lost touch and have the opportunity to reconnect through you. It's just a really nice way to build a community and also benefit from it, hopefully, whether it's to rehire somebody that was really good or to give them the impetus to start seeing you in a new light and or for them to just be a long-term fan of you, of your product, of your company, and feel very comfortable referring people your way. Just a thought. So think about it. I think that it's an interesting topic. I think we don't think about it in this manner. I think we just tend to say, okay, they resigned, they resigned. We give them a little breakfast, maybe not even that throw them a donut, a balloon, and wish them well, and you know, never tap into them again. And somehow that feels like a waste, especially when so many employers are talking about talent shortages, right? So this is just another way to maybe get ahead of the talent shortage and to also build rapport. And because community is such a huge cornerstone of everything we discuss now in talent management and in the world of work, it's just another perspective. So. I hope you enjoyed the tips. I hope you enjoy the article. If you're just watching this on my YouTube, you definitely want to head back to the aristocracyofhr.com to check out the post. And um, if you've already read the post, thank you so much. And thanks for tuning in. And please share it, share it, share it, share it with anybody that you know that can benefit from it. And as usual, I am 
happy to share what I know. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to provide value. And I encourage you to subscribe to this here channel because like I said, I'm here every week just trying to open your minds to different ways of doing things in this world of work, this crazy world of work that we're in. So thanks for watching. I'll be back next week. Have a great rest of the week and we'll talk soon.